The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Friday. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. We have a CPI number out this morning, 6.8%, pretty much in line with expectations year over year. Quite a number when you're talking about almost 7% inflation on a yearly basis, and the market takes it and runs with it up about 20 points. You see the acceleration. I got the chart here at 830. You see the S&Ps jump from about 46.75 to 46.94. NASDAQ 100 up 136 points the dow right now up 187 points that's half a percent you have the nasdaq 100 up more than eight tenths percent the russell up almost nine tenths percent right now bitcoin up 2200 dollars even bitcoin catches a bit on the fundamental news of inflationary data at this point bitcoin right near fifty thousand on the dot you got gold catching a bit on that number as well look at gold rocking from about 1770 early this morning we come into the cpi data at about 1775 we were just trading at 1790 gold's up about nine dollars right now on the session we jump to silver silver's up about 15 pennies catching a bid as well 2216 and we jump to notes notes and bonds uh slight lift but pretty much right to where we were at the close of action yesterday you're negative one tick technically on the session in the 10 year but we just got a lift of about nine ticks to the upside on the 10-year, we're talking about a yield right now on the 10-year, 1.49%. 30-year right now, positive by seven ticks. You see a little bit of higher price and lower yield on that number. Pretty remarkable that that number uh, just comes in line and the market actually likes that we have 6.8% inflation because that might not force the Fed to act too rapidly. It's remarkable when you say it in that way, right? 7% inflation will allow the Fed to act in a cautionary manner as opposed to having to speed up the process of raising interest rates. Say it again, folks, 7% inflation will allow the Fed more time as opposed to having to panic because inflation is too pervasive because that was the expected number. I'm not sure that's gonna hold. We're gonna see how this market opens. That's a pretty staggering number when you come in line with almost a 7% inflationary number year over year. And let's just get into the headline. Yesterday, the headline was lowest initial jobless claim since 1969. It seems like every day, folks, we're breaking records going back 40 or 50 years. Today, we got the consumer prices climb at the fastest annual rate since 1982. Think about it. We get the fastest annual rate since 1982, and you got the S&Ps climbing about a half a percent on that news, and we are within 1% right now. You're talking about all-time highs on the S&P. You don't have to go back far, folks. The morning of November 22nd, coming in early prior to Thanksgiving, 4740. We're just outside of about 1% from all-time highs as inflation sits at about 7%. Now, getting into the number, month over month, 0.8%. Folks, the Fed's supposed to be shooting for 2% annualized. We're pushing 0.8% from October, 6.8% from a year ago. The advance was broad, includes gains in shelter, food, and fuel. Uh, there's the spike action. You got to go back to the early 80s to see anything like that. When we were coming in, looks like 1991, 1992, you did up, rise up to a level of almost 5% or a little bit above that before it curtailed. Uh, for the entirety of my adult life, folks, though, this chart has been nowhere near where we are right now. You did get a rise at one point in 2008, where the CPI year over year, not counting the core number there, okay? Big difference with the CPI versus the core number there. Core being in pink, you can see it never quite had the rise that it had back in 2008. Maybe that had to do with energy prices as they were spiking dramatically. But this time around, yes, energy is contributing. But that core number spiking in a big way, bringing you back to basically where we were 1991, almost at that number. And, man, you back things up to 
Uh, I'm trying to get the exact number. Yeah, you back it up to 82. We're talking about core number of 8.9%, quite a number. Uh, median estimate was looking for 6.8%. On a monthly basis, a little bit hotter than the market was looking for. Market was looking for 0.7% on a monthly basis. Uh, the increase was broad, as they say. Yeah, core inflation, if you take out food and energy, not sure that makes any sense at all, 0.5% uh, still from a monthly basis. Core CPI, 4.9% year over year. That's a 30-year high as well. Shelter costs, considered to be more structural component of the CPI, make up about a third of the overall index, rose 0.5%. 5% in November from a month earlier. They make up a third of the overall index. It is structural, as in it's not a variable number like the um, food and energy that they take out, 0.5%. Compared to the same month last year, the 3.8% gain was the biggest since 2007. Housing costs are anticipated to drift higher. Uh, food at home, how about this? 6.4% from a year ago, the most since December 28. We know that gas is going up. 6.1% from the prior month. Watch out for that one. Rent of primary residents increased 0.4% from October. Uh, that one varies depending on where you are in the country in a big way. So that number out at 8.30 this morning, the market taking it and run with it right now. As all the indices in the green, you got Bitcoin trading higher as well, gold trading higher as well, and you actually have notes and bonds trading higher on that news indicating a lower yield market not to worry about rising interest rates and okay with a 6.8 percent inflationary number seems like that's expectations and the market is just okay with expectation right now probably because we've been missing expectations a lot lately folks you back it up to the beginning of this year and you don't even have to go that far a lot of economists were looking for 2.5 percent inflation for 2021 we're now at 6.8 percent inflation just matching expectations so i think the market over at least the last six or nine months had really missed on a lot of fronts. Maybe there's just uh, a, a sigh of relief that maybe we come in at expectations finally at 6.8%. Maybe there's some hope that if we come in at expectations for 6.8% right now, maybe the expectations going forward for a year would be in line, which would indicate that we're back to about 2.5% uh, as we come into 2023. It is remarkable, folks. You got 15 days until Christmas. And then uh, what do we got? We got about three weeks until 2022. Remarkable. All right, let's jump around to some of the FAG stocks, see how they're trading. Amazon shares trading higher this morning on the CPI data as well. You're up about 20 bucks. We got to talk about Apple. Apple shares, remarkable. You're going to open higher yet again. You have a high print yesterday of 176.75. The number you're looking for on Apple to reach that $3 trillion valuation, I believe it's just under 183, 182.79, uh, something like that. 183 is the number that Apple needs to reach that $3 trillion valuation. We jump over to Tesla. We'll pull up Tesla. Elon Musk selling more shares into the market. Uh, we'll talk about that headline coming up after the break as well. But Tesla's up about 10 bucks, still holding pretty well above 1000 You're talking about Elon selling. It's pushing 11 or $12 billion right now. Uh, the number he is going to get to, folks, is $17 billion. That is the sale that he talked about on Twitter. Twitter said he should do it. Elon knew that that would probably be the results because he wanted to sell off anyway to pay some taxes, and he's still got some selling to go. It seems like every few days another story comes out that he sold another another billion dollars worth of his position. Uh, and with all things considered, folks, taking a look at where this equity has been, sitting above a thousand. Yeah, you were up to twelve eighty three, but you were also just trading at six hundred as recently as June. You were trading at seven twenty seven eighteen as recently as September. 20th, folks. That's less than three months, and you're trading at 1,010 right now. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now positive by 32 points. We get the NASDAQ 100 positive by 126. All the markets trading higher on the CPI data this morning. Uh, S&Ps right within about 1% of the all-time highs. We're going to jump over to Peloton shares. Peloton today trading down to 39.40. Quite the pullback last night as well. Now, Peloton, I believe I had a couple uh, news stories out here for Peloton. They were down here at some point. I was checking them out. Uh, Credit Suisse downgraded the stock to neutral from Outperform, noted a number of headwinds for Peloton, including a return to out-of-home fitness and a shift in consumer spending. So that is uh, a material fact that you could say for sure. When they get a downgrade, uh, they're lower today. They were lower yesterday as well. Talk about a pullback from 46 to almost 40 yesterday. We take a look at Peloton on a weekly basis. My goodness, up to 171 to start the year. Can you believe, folks, that Peloton is about to get back to a pre-pandemic price level. I mean, I wouldn't have believed that was possible if you told me that Peloton could trade back to prices that it was trading at in January of 2020. And you're talking about being only six bucks away from there. You're talking about uh, in February, you reached a high of 30 460 you're trading at 39.23 now they get a downgrade because of material facts going on in their business but here's a material fact as well the material may be questionable okay but it's a fact folks so my dad emails me this morning first uh now this is has to do with uh the show sex in the city a lot of females really watch that show i've really never gotten into it i know we have a lot of uh more so male viewers, but I know we get females out there as well. If you want to watch that show, folks, spoiler alert, okay, it's coming for you. There was a reboot last night that started on HBO for Sex in the City. Did not watch it, uh, but if you're a, a Peloton shareholder, you might want to be aware of what happened. Uh, again, spoiler alert, here we go. So, uh, it comes out last night, Peloton blames shocking Sex in the City death on characters' extravagant lifestyle. The way it sums up, folks, and even as somebody that did not watch this show, uh, one of the recurring theme characters, now, uh, Carrie, I believe, is uh, the 
uh, character in the middle. She had dated one man in particular off and on. They called him Mr. Big. Well, what happens, folks? Mr. Big dies on a Peloton in the first episode of this show coming back online. Now, here's the best part of this in terms of top, talk about dropping the ball. Peloton claims ignorance in uh, and just like that bike fracas. So Peloton's I, I'm going to read this. I want to get the exact quote here is that uh, they were not aware. Excuse me one second. Yeah, the home fitness company, whose key product is an exercise bike, said it did not realize its product would be used as a prop that led to the death of Mr. Big, who dropped dead after a 45-minute ride in the first episode. Uh, the spokesman said in a statement that it knew its product would be used in the show, but not the storyline, adding that the bike wasn't to blame for the cigar-smoking character's fictional demise. If you are in the press arguing for the reason why a fictional character may have died using your product and you were aware of that product. I mean, how would you just not say, how are you going to use the bike? In what way are you going to use the bike? And they, they, the, the, and it's the best part of it really is, is because it became a storyline. Uh, this character became obsessed with the product, I guess is how they put it. So this is just a random article I pulled up on the L.A. Times that talked about it, okay? Uh, this show originally came out in 1998. They just rebooted it last night on HBO Max. Uh, and what happened was is that on his thousandth ride, so he becomes, uh, they talk about the pandemic. He becomes a big, I'm trying to get to the exact part here. Yeah, so Big is particularly fixated with an instructor. The bike occupies a place of honor in his sleek uh, apartment between the fancy shower and the walk-in closet. He's got it all glorified. I did not watch the episode, folks. but So they glorify the whole bike, right? They occupy that he's, during the pandemic, you got fresh white towels, a rolled up neat, neatly shelf next to the bike. You get the bike in a special spot in the house. He goes on his thousandth bike ride. He jumps in the shower, and he dies. <laughs> Shame on them for not doing their work. Somebody there to say, hey, this is going to be a huge program. Yes, you can use our bike. Just give us a little bit of a heads up of what the plot line is going to be around that type of use of our product. They didn't do it. What do they do? They have the bike basically end up killing them. Uh, instead, he unclips from his 1,000th ride, drops his phone in the shower, and promptly keels over. Somebody's not doing their job, folks, at this company. And it's uh, that's just gross negligence for whoever was in charge of that i mean just as a reasonable person right if you have a product that's going to get used wouldn't you say give me an indication of some degree of how that product's going to be used i guarantee they learned a lesson but you learned it too late and that storyline is out there and there's a lot of people that love that product and just the fact that it has a narrative now that they're mocking it that they're talking about that this big character that everybody loved, he died using a Peloton on his thousandth ride. You know, not sure it's going to have a material impact. Um, and this is what, so one analyst at BMO Capital Markets, this is in the Bloomberg piece that my dad sent over to me this morning, says, although unlikely to impact sales, as I'm talking about, okay, not really material, uh, this is an analyst at BMO, it does question whether Peloton is losing degrees of control over its storytelling, perhaps its greatest achievement to date. And I would agree. Uh, not sure that that means it should be back to pre-pandemic levels here. At some point, Peloton probably is uh, around for the future. But man, that is a big drop ball in a big way. I can't believe that you would put your company, a product of your company's, your company's product in that type of a spotlight and not even ask how it was going to be used. Uh, there's more going on at that company if that can happen, folks, because there are big, big people getting paid lots and lots of money to make those decisions. And it uh, seems like an intern would get fired if they made that type of a mistake, let alone an executive um, that's pushing out their product to be used in one of the biggest premieres of a reboot you know, in recent time. Sex and the City is a monumental show that was around for a decade or something like that at least. And it's rebooting. And in the premiere episode, uh, your product is killing off one of the most beloved characters. We'll leave it at that. All right, let's jump around to other stocks we have going on because we got some companies out with earnings in a big way. We'll jump right to the line. We'll go to the top here. 
Chewy is out with their numbers. Not so lovely for Chewy. C-H-W-Y is their symbol. They trade down about 10% right now. They're trading at 50, 25. Uh, wider than expected quarterly loss. Sales in line. Profit impacted by higher costs for labor and supply chain issues. Okay. Lululemon, they're a little bit lower as well. Lulu, they beat quarterly profits at 162, 21 cents above estimates. Revenue slightly above forecast as well. But what do they warn about? They warn potentially an impact demand for athleisure. But if virus concerns lead to temporary store closures and further supply chain issues, all right, they're not talking about uh, a shift in demand from a reopening trade. They're talking about could impact demand for athleisure with the new variants because of store closures and supply chain issues supply chain issues guess what chewy supply chain issues lululemon supply chain issues it's a continuing theme that's going to persist and many companies are going to be blaming that uh it's your job as investors and traders to fight through which companies are actually really dealing with that or which companies might actually be experiencing uh, customers waning demand for their product versus just a supply chain issue all right we got a lot of stocks to cover, folks. Broadcom's trading higher this morning. We got Costco trading higher on their earnings. Oracle is up 12%. We got the market up 31 points. We got a lot to go over, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open right now. We got the S&Ps up 33 points right now. Jump over to Peloton shares. Peloton actually a little bit lower, down 1.7% on their earnings last night. We were just up at 485 recently. We're trading at 410 right now for Peloton shares. Uh, jumping around, uh, excuse me, for Lululemon. Lululemon, that is. We're looking at Lululemon down 1.6%. Peloton down about a quarter percent. But man, they have had quite a slide recently, as we talked about. Jumping back to other stocks that we were going to go jump over this morning. We got Broadcom. Up 7% pre-market, beat street forecast, top and bottom line, earned an adjusted 781 a share, 7 cents above. It's pretty close in line, but they also issued an upbeat forecast on continued high demand from its cloud computing customers, AVGO. And there's a pop for you, up 6.6%. Man, this stock is just on fire. Back it up to the lows of COVID. And you're talking about, man, you're talking about a run from 155 to 621. Yeah, I had that on there at some point looking for a pullback. No such thing. This thing just consolidates for the early part of 2021 before taking off higher. We were just trading at 500 as recently as about six weeks ago. You're trading at 622 on Broadcom shares this morning. Let's jump over to some of the other chip stocks. NVIDIA shares up about 1.5%. This thing's had some volatility recently, chopping around above 300 or so. Uh, and we'll jump over to Intel shares as well. Intel trading at about 50 bucks right now, down six tenths percent uh, on the session. The last few days, quite a pullback for Intel shares. Yeah, they popped higher this week on the news that they were going to be spinning off and not spinning off, going public. They were going to be uh, pushing out, still owning uh, a majority share of their self-driving unit of their company. And they give it all back down to about 51 bucks, but popping a bit today with the market up 1%. Costco, they're trading higher, 298 for the quarter versus 264. Revenue topped as well. Higher cost and supply chain issues that Costco said was, it was able to largely mitigate. That's what you like to hear right now if you're dealing with those types of issues. Costco shares, yeah, we are higher. Come on, correlate, 2.7% this stock. Whew. Quite a stock indeed. You're talking about in March, you're trading at 315, and just like that, we're at 537 right now, right near all time highs for Costco. Oracle, yeah, check this one out. They were up more than double digits in the pre market right uh, earlier. We'll see how they're trading right now. Quarterly sales and revenue beat estimates in the business software company, $10 billion increase in the share repurchase program. Investors usually love to hear that. Buck 21 a share, 10 cents above estimates, particular strength for its cloud infrastructure business. ORCL is their symbol. Whoo, there's a pop for you. So much for 12%. How about 19% to the upside? Man, it's amazing. The cloud, folks. Look at that acceleration. You pop from 88. Look at this. You pop from 88 to about 98. And then since then, we've gained another seven bucks from where we were after the conference call began at about five o'clock last night, Oracle trade higher in a big way. Yeah, Beyond Meat. So Taco Bell dropping plans to test Beyond Meat's plant-based version of carne asada. Carne asada, is that how I say it? I think so. And uh, the, the reason is interesting. They just don't like the taste, <laughs> not what you wanna hear. Taco Bell said is said to have been dissatisfied with samples it received in October, although the companies continue to work together on new products. That is not what you want to hear if you're in Beyond Meat, folks. Uh, they basically just said, yeah, we just want no part of what you're putting out for a product, down 2.2%. Now, here's what I will say. When we were out vacationing in the Keys last week, doing the programs live from the Keys, uh, the one thing we were doing, we were doing some grilling, and we tried some of the Impossible Burgers. They were pretty good. They were pretty good. I tried one. Uh, here's a, a tip of advice, though. Don't have an Impossible Burger and then have a real burger right after it because that's what we were doing and that's what I did. And then it was like, ah, oh, well, geez, now the real burger. But if it's something that – and and I love eating meat, folks. I love eating red meat. I love eating chicken especially. Uh, red meat is a little tough on my system sometimes, so I like to keep it maybe once a week, maybe twice a week. The one thing that these companies continually stress, whether it's Beyond Meat or Impossible, is that they don't have to be a complete substitute. They're not looking just for people who are vegetarians. They're looking for people, maybe like myself, that don't want to eat red meat more than maybe once a week, once every couple weeks. You're trying to keep it to a minimum. Um, if that's the case, yes, I could see it. But it's not quite the same thing, to say the least, not even close, because I had a, an Impossible burger, and I was like, oh, that tastes pretty good. And then the real burgers were up and I said, and there's the real stuff right there. Uh, on down 2.7%. We take a look at these stocks. Yeah, talk about some volatility, and you are pushing 
basically IPO lows for Beyond Meat. You've been up to 239, you've been up to 200, you've been up as recently as this year to 221, and you're trading at 68 bucks for Beyond Meat. All right, what else we got going on here? We talked about Peloton. Yeah, AMC. So AMC's got insiders selling, folks, and can't blame them at Reddit prices. Uh, you're back down to 28 bucks. Now, this is a weekly. Taking a look at the daily. You were chopping around at about 40 bucks for a while. You have the CEO selling 312,000 shares, folks. 312,000 shares. I mean, if you're pushing that out at 40 bucks, what is that talking about? What's that? That's what, 12 million bucks, right? I gotta make sure I'm doing simple math in my head. But 312,000 shares times about 40 bucks. Yeah, you're talking about $12.5 million that he just cashed out at this thing. Um, now, I'm ballparking 40 bucks. It could have been a little bit less. It could have been a little bit more. But trading a little bit lower, SEC filing, showing a sale of 312,500 shares by CEO Adam Aaron and a sale of 18,000 shares by the CFO. Uh, the CEO had indicated in November that he would so be soon begin selling shares as part of estate planning. I mean, good for him, I guess. But if the CEO thought that this company had upward appreciation of the share price, he would not be dumping 12.5 million shares of the company. What he's doing is he's saying, I'm taking 12.5 million dollars of this position and I'm putting it in something else. Because my guess is $40 is a pretty sweet spot for AMC, considering that they continue to struggle to, uh, to make money in any capacity, to put, it, to put it lightly. I mean, you're now trading at prices, folks. I don't even think we're at these prices yet. $28.91 was the low back in August. Yeah, you're now back at prices that we have not seen since May of this year when this thing really rocketed higher. Think about that. In AMC, okay, now, yes, you were back down there a week ago, okay, but you are now below every single price action this equity has traded in, essentially going back to the run that it had when it traded from 10 bucks to 72. You don't want to be in no man's land, folks, which is from 30 bucks down to 10, and that's where AMC is sitting right now. There is no reason why this equity can't be back down there. Um, there's no reason why any of these GameStop, Reddit-fueled stocks can't. To recoil to reality, AMC was trading at under $2 this calendar year. It's kind of hard to remember. That's what we're dealing with. This calendar year, AMC was trading at a buck ninety-one. Uh, the acceleration in May, I mean, you thought the fun was going on in January when it traded from 2 bucks to 20 Well, it was not over. You subsided for a while, sat at 10 bucks, and then exploded higher in May up to 72.62. But just like that, we give it back. I mean, if you're in margin on this stock, you've almost lost it all just from September on AMC. Let's jump over to GameStop and see how they're trading this morning. Be careful. These Reddit stocks are pushing the lower boundary lines of where we've been. I mean, look at GameStop. GameStop, you're almost in a losing position for anybody in this equity back to March, right? You're trading at 157. We've been pushing 150 to 250 about for the better part of nine months. And we're at the lower boundary line of that. Be interesting to see how that plays out towards the end of the year as well. In terms of the markets, playing out with some strength, folks. Look at this weekly, right? So much for market fear and a sell-off. S&Ps right now within 48 points of all-time highs, well within the channel line, and that is a weekly bar to the upside, folks. Stay tuned. We'll be coming back, going over some other equities. We got some Friday action. We'll be Are right you back, in the folks. market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
Paperwhite's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up 31 points right now. We got crude trading up 73 pennies at 71.66. Back to a daily to see the action we have going on in crude. Kind of just chopping around above 70 bucks right now. Gold holding on to some of those gains, but up only four bucks. Gold and it had been as high as about 17.90. Yes, yeah, 17.91. So gold trading down about 10 bucks from that high print. We jump over to notes and bonds. Put it back on a 15 minute to see the action so far this morning. You got the 10 year right now, positive by two ticks but you look at where we were coming into the 830 number you're talking about 12 ticks to the upside you're talking about 1.48 percent the yield on the 10-year we jump over to the vix volatility index dropping below 20 to 1950 on that vix uh my take though folks is that we got some volatility coming at you next week with the fed I'm not so sure that the market uh has a peg on chairman powell right now and how slow and ready he is going to be to be patient i would listen to his words he's expiring the word transitory and maybe part of the reason folks that economists are looking for cpi data to get back to a 2.5 percent print somewhere in the beginning of 2023 would be because for the potential for the fed to accelerate what they're doing here uh, it's possible, folks. I was talking about, I think, yesterday on my show, Bill Dudley, who used to be the president of the New York Fed. Uh, he wants rates raised, okay? So that is his part, the, his bias. But he was out there saying, you know, the market might not have how quickly Chairman Powell could surprise things with an acceleration here of an acceleration of the taper, potentially leading to interest rates rising a little bit quicker than the market's looking for. We're at 6.8% right now. At the end of 2021, you back it up to what Chairman Powell was saying at the beginning of 2021. He was not saying we're going to end the year at 7% inflation, folks. Okay? So he does not want to be known as a two-term Fed chairman that let the economy, you know, just absolutely go out of control, causing inflation, causing, you know, uh, basically stealing money from savers is what that does, folks. You know, if you're out there and you're saving – Boy, try and get that money invested in something, whether it's real estate, um, whether it's some stocks you believe in in the long term or something, because cash right now is getting hurt in a big way. Uh, those savers in cash getting hurt in a big way. And Chairman Powell, you know, he's got a great reputation right now. He's handled things very well, but he's on the verge, and I think he understands it, of this economy spinning out of control to inflation. 
And I imagine he's not going to be too afraid to accelerate things in light of the words he used, folks. Talking about expiring the word transitory, I think he deliberated long and hard about using the words, you know, doing away with the term transitory. He would not have said that lightly. He said it in between meetings, too. You have to be trying to listen to the messaging, okay? He's not just going to come out and surprise you. Maybe that was his soft way of without doing it during a meeting, without doing it where you're going to come out and may potentially freak out the market that you're saying, hey, we're changing things. He does it at an appearance in between meetings, um, potentially softening the blow. So when he comes next week, I mean, it's at least a probability, folks. And now you have the market, you know, within 1% of all-time highs with inflation at 7% and the Fed about to accelerate its tapering. I don't know. I see some volatility. Doesn't mean we're going to sink into some kind of bear market, man, but there might be a recoil at least. And I hear my dad talk about it all the time. I don't even want to talk about what a natural retracement is for a market that trades from 2100 to 4600. Okay? No matter where you pick on this chart, the pullbacks of just a 382 are substantial to say the least. And it's really like there's no other trend line than the bottom. We've been at a one-way shot, folks. Okay? Now, yeah, you could say the run we've had has been extraordinary from October. And let's just see where we're lining up there. You're talking about a pullback that gave back 50%. Okay, so we achieved potentially that one. But that's only, that's that's talking about two months, essentially. Okay, there are pullbacks much larger that are possible, folks. Uh, you back it up to even where we were. So that is the full COVID lows. This is the calendar year for this year. All right, and as I said, I mean, look how defined this is in the channel line. We're sitting basically at all-time highs when we're coming into potentially the most volatile period of all. The reason why the market's been doing so well is because of stimulus and the Federal Reserve. That is begin beginning to go away, and the market hasn't begun to price that in yet, I would assume. Doesn't mean there's not going to be great stocks still out there, folks. Apple up six tenths percent again today, 175.65. But I would just keep those spikes back up on your back. Uh, because these moves are pretty fantastic. I mean, a company like Apple, you just added $35 a share. Uh, since October 13th, I think that says that's about a $600 billion market capitalization. That's $600 billion that is now sitting in accounts that was not there as recently as October 13th, folks. If you don't think some of that can get pulled back in a natural retracement, then I would disagree. And with that, we get the S&Ps giving it up a little bit, folks. We're only 17 minutes into the day, and already the S&Ps, we got one 830 bar to the upside, and then every 15 minutes, we got red bars, folks. I would be careful. We got the S&Ps at 46.83. Tech stocks, NASDAQ 100, giving it up as well. <coughs> Excuse me. It's kind of what I was talking about. Um, the market loving a 7% inflationary data point ahead of the Fed, potentially accelerating tapering and rising interest rates. I would question that theory, and I would at least, at least be factoring in the probability even if it's 10%, even if it's 20%, even if it's 30%, that the Fed accelerates things a little bit quicker than the market anticipates next week. You gotta be aware of it, folks. All right, let's jump over to Tesla shares. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the show, Tesla, Elon Musk selling some more shares, as should be expected. Tesla, a little bit of a sell-off with the market. You're down 1.6% today, nothing too substantial in light of the sell-off we have going on at the open. Elon sells another 963 million of Tesla stock. Some of the shares were sold in part to satisfy tax obligations is usually how they throw that in there. Um, he also exercised options to purchase 2.17 million shares of Tesla, according to the filing. So what's going on is here is he's exercising a lot of options and then he's selling a lot of them, not all of them, to make up for the taxes that he's going to owe. Now, he's out there on Twitter, as he usually is, thinking of quitting my job and becoming an influencer full time. What do you think? is what that stands for. Uh, I think he's totally kidding there, but I've talked about it before, folks. I would not be surprised if he pulls back in some capacity from his active role in Tesla. Um, and it doesn't necessarily have to do with this sale. It just kind of has to do with the fact that he is a visionary, man. He is not a process person that sits on his desk all day and thinks about the nuts and bolts of an assembly line. Yes, he is involved in every single thing going on in that company in the early stages, but it might be at the point and he might, maybe he just gets more involved with SpaceX. Maybe he gets involved with another venture he's got going on. Uh, he will always be involved with Tesla, but there's a certain possibility, folks, that that thing is on a launch pad and uh, it's it's moving at all cylinders in terms of the the innovation part of that company 
is going to be moving forward. But they're a trillion dollar company now, and they are no longer a startup with a vision. Uh, they've achieved that vision, and there is the potential that he pulls back in some capacity to try and innovate in some other way. He's got big goals, folks, and he has changed the electric vehicle industry forever. He's done it. It's done, right? Electric vehicles are here. They're coming faster than we even thought. Elon is a big part of that reason. So maybe he uses his time to further further goals like flying to Mars. And I'm serious. You might see it happening, folks. And if that happens, boy, watch out to the downside. If he ever steps away from like CEO role or something like that from Tesla, be careful on that stock. Uh, right now, sitting at 986. Market a little soft like now, right now. You got the Russell giving it up. Look at that. Russell in the red. S&P's positive by 24. We got crude positive by 25. Gold positive by 4. We'll be right back to finish up the show. So stay tuned. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps right now up 28 points. NASDAQ up 95. Russell back in the positive by three and the Dow up 154. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks. We'll kick it off with Amazon. Amazon shares right now down about a tenth of a percent. All the market's giving it up a little bit on the open right now. Amazon traded down just about 30 bucks from the open. We jump over to Apple shares. Apple's been one of the strongest companies out there, man. Every day, you're up 7 tenths percent right now for Apple. Microsoft, look at that. Microsoft up 1.5% right now. Google shares up about 3 tenths percent right now. We jump over to social media. Facebook up about a percent. Twitter shares 
down about 1.3 percent we'll jump over to snapchat shares down 1.2 percent right now jumping over back to notes and bonds to see the move we have just higher we go folks check it out right it is not stopping right now which is remarkable we're talking about a yield in the 10-year 1.465 1.465 percent uh we're seeing a little bit of bond buying and a little bit of s p selling right now which is interesting that we're going to see yields decreasing right now decreasing yields right now with an inflation number of almost seven percent i didn't walk through the fundamental one of that one folks because it's got me a little bit confused in terms of the fed yes they could give them the ability to be a little bit more paused because we came in line with info in with estimates, but man, I keep saying it because wrap your head around it, folks. Next week's meeting, um, there could be a little bit of a surprise in terms of the acceleration, and it's not going to be anything crazy, okay? Chairman Powell is not going to shock the market, but just a few words could surprise the market just like it did a couple weeks ago. Or was it last week already? I think it was last week because it's already Friday. Last week, uh, when he said expiring the term transitory, you saw the sell offs possible, folks. Uh, yes, that had to do with variant concerns. But my opinion would be is that the variant concerns just provided a little bit of volatility. And the Fed action is the one that provided the downside over there. You got the 10-year right now at 1.46%. We got the S&P continuing. 15-minute bars, they're negative, folks. S&Ps are just positive by 19. You look where we were at 8.30, you were trading at 46.99. We've given up 21 S&P points, and we're dropping. We're dropping. Russell negative by 5. NASDAQ 100 positive by 59. Should be an interesting day in the markets, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's up live right now with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Fast Market at 11. Uh, excuse me. Larry Pizzaventu is live at 11. Fast Market at 12. Live programming all day. Have a great Friday, everybody.